behind you, though, is, is what it is. This is an artist rendition because, of course, we don't see the planet itself. Mm -hmm. So the significance of this discovery is that it's the first time we found a planet that has the right mass and is the right distance to have liquid water and a substantial atmosphere. People have been getting closer and closer over the last couple of years. They've been finding planets that are on the hot edge of the habitable zone and on the cold edge of the habitable zone. But finally, we have one right in the middle. The truly exciting thing about this discovery is that the star is so nearby uh, and uh, that we found it relatively quickly in the scheme of things. So this suggests that, that uh, potentially habitable planets are very, very common. Well, they say that you can get to two-tenths of the speed of light if you use matter, antimatter. Uh, we don't know exactly what the atmosphere is composed of. I mean, if the atmosphere is pure ammonia, it might be tough. Um, if, if it's conventional gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, that sort of thing, sure, there's every, there's every bit of reason to think that uh, life as we know it could exist there. But without knowing in detail what the atmospheric constituents are, what's the balance of nitrogen and oxygen, that sort of thing, uh, we may have to bring our own atmosphere with us or manufacture it uh, in habitats or whatever there, as we would do if we lived on Mars, for instance. Well, uh, it was only 15 years ago that the Doppler technique actually first began revealing planets, and very quickly we've gone from no planets to about 400. Uh, we began following up this star 11 years ago at Keck. Uh, it's a faint star. It's very close by, but because it's a, one of these red dwarf stars, uh, it's very faint. And so in order to get, the, get enough light from the star to make this technique work, we need the world's biggest telescope, Keck is literally the world's best, most cutting-edge telescope. The real question has always been, uh, are we alone or not in this universe? I think everybody, you know, sort of wonders about that. And what does it mean to be alone? What does it mean to know that there's other life forms out there? Um, and so we're trying to answer that by finding places where life, as we know it, can exist. And if we do find places where we know life exists, it will tell us a lot more about how we fit into the hierarchy of, uh, of, of life in the universe.